Hey, welcome back once again. I'm Colin Weaver. These are the IT Dojo CISSP questions of the day where I'm trying to help you CISSP folk or soon to be CISSP folk uh, get your CISSP certification. So I come at you each time, give you two questions, hopefully helping you to prep, think, giving you things to think about and contemplate and go read more about, study all that fun stuff. So without further ado, here comes question number one. Question number one for you today is which of the following is not a component of a configuration management system. There's your answer choices. Look them over. Think about it. When you're ready, click play again if you click pause, and then we will walk it through. All right, configuration management systems are um, pieces of software that have the ability to go in and help you make sure that certain things are deployed on systems, that they are a particular version, and that uh, if they are changed, that you can go in and revert them back and also be able to keep records of all these things that are being done. Um, some of the really popular configuration management systems that are out there today are things like Ansible or Chef or Puppet, uh, incredibly powerful tools uh, that you can add into your enterprise and go in and uh, control how configurations are deployed. And to certainly a large extent, also they can go in and integrate in with tools like Splunk or something like that to even give you richer reporting on things that are going on. Uh, there's, there's probably a gajillion different products in the marketplace and uh, I wouldn't even begin to know the names of them all, but uh, certainly there's quite a few. Uh, so one of the things that they definitely have a feature to provide support for is a version control mechanism to go in and make sure that you, one, can specify which version of which piece of software is currently on the system, but also to have a record of which version was on the system when it was updated and things like that. So that will definitely be on there um, or, or within a configuration management system. How about choice number two, the configuration management systems integrated in uh, system threat modeling? No, uh, they don't do anything that's threat modeling related. All right, choice number three, automated deployment scripts. Absolutely, now, that's a huge part of what these things can go in and do, where you can go in and just run a script and it will connect to a node and go in and do all the stuff that you have that script configured to do. Uh, that's part of the incredible power of these configuration management systems is they can go in and automate a lot of that stuff for you. And then the last choice is also something that we would typically expect to see in a configuration management system, which is uh, a change history or a log of change history. And again, uh, using things like Syslog and Splunk and um, uh, other configuration management tools like, again, you know, Ansible or, or Puppet, um, you can go in and create a rich history of, you know, kind of who did what and when. Um, or did somebody do something outside of uh, what was, say, a ticketed item, you know, for somebody to go in and make a change that hadn't been evaluated by or evaluated and approved by your change management system. So um, those are definitely things that can go in and do. So the thing... Again, just to reiterate, the, the answer that you were looking for in here is that they don't typically have threat modeling built into them. Uh, they are really focused on configuration. All right, question number two today, uh, hopefully a little bit lighter fare than some of the questions, is which of the following is the reason that the Montreal Protocol went in and effectively banned all Halon-based fire suppression systems? Um, there's your answer choices. Look them over when you got the right one. Tell me why, and then we'll walk it through. All right, this answer is very straightforward. Um, Halon is considered a uh, danger to the ozone layer, so therefore it is not considered to be environmentally friendly. And back in the late 80s, a very large number of countries got together and agreed upon not only Halon, but several other chemicals that were uh, ozone depleting chemicals to go in and no longer use them. Uh, that makes Halon-based fire suppression mostly a thing of the past. There may be a thing or two out there where it's still around, but. Um, but there's certainly no new Halon-based fire suppression systems being deployed. Somebody can probably comment and give me an exception of that, but I, you know, none that I'm aware of are around. But, uh, but that's what the Montreal Protocol was all about, was going in and saying things like Halon are, are bad for the environment, so let's not use them. And that's it. All right, two quick questions. Hope you enjoyed them. Click like if you did. I'll see you next time. See you.